Hey, what's up guys? It's time for another episode of What's Hot and What's Not in Children's Ministry. Today, you guys, we are talking about progressive children's ministries versus dying children's ministries. Which category does your ministry fit in? Stick around and find out. fly-by-night operation. It's constantly requiring of its leaders to put in the necessary work to reach tomorrow's generation. And let me tell you, you guys, when it comes to children's ministry, you're either putting in the work or you are dooming your department to a slow death. Don't let that happen. So today I'm going to share with you five differences between progressive children's ministries versus dying children's ministries. And listen, don't worry if your behavior is looking a little grim. It is never too late to level up in your leadership and bring life to your children's ministry department. Number one, progressive children's ministries are relevant. They're well fresh. They're always on the pulse of what's happening in their church and their community, and they are willing to shift whenever necessary to better reach the children and families that they're called to serve. Now, dying children's ministries, on the other hand, are way too busy trying to keep sacred cows alive. These types of ministries are so obsessed with their traditions that quite often they're blinded to what's most important. These ministries are typically not led by vision or even by God for that matter, but rather by manipulative longtime members who are secretly calling the shots and making the decisions. You can't paint this because this room is important to so-and-so. You can't have this event because this person over here doesn't like events like that. You have to do it this way because it's tradition and we've always done it this way. You know, If you find yourself in an environment like this, don't panic. Just utilize the three R's, respectful, remember, and relax. Be respectful to the creators of those methods. Besides that one time, those methods did work. Watch your words and what you say to others. Make sure you honor those who have labored before you. And you just may be surprised. They may become your greatest advocates when it comes to changes in the future and all because you showed honor. Here's another R. Remember. Remember your why and hold true to it. It's your why that will help keep you in the hardest of times, you guys. Never lose sight of it. And the final R, relax. Listen to me. It takes time to change a culture of thinking. Be patient, you guys, and have grace for yourself in the process. Invite the Holy Spirit in and ask him to help open up minds and prepare hearts for the work that you believe that he is called for you to do. Number two, progressive children's ministries send their teams to training. These ministries value training because they understand the importance of growing and developing people who are laboring in the ministry. They operate off of a spirit of excellence all the way. And they understand that children's ministry is a team sport and that if they are truly going to succeed for the kingdom and reach children and families, all must be equipped. Now, in a dying children's ministry, only the director is allowed to go. And sometimes that's even a stretch. Don't even think about asking about somebody else. The truth is, these ministries are always cutting costs and not really looking to invest in anybody. Now, I'm not throwing shade on churches who may be struggling financially. The truth is, budgets matter and come in all shapes and sizes. But let me give you some advice. If this is you, look for ways to train others. Inquire of conference scholarships in an effort to bring others along. Come back from conferences and host your own training for those who labor week after week alongside you. Look into virtual training for your team. It's a cost-efficient way to ensure your team gets the training they need while offering the needed convenience for today's family. The whole point is 
Progressive Children's Ministries train their teams. Number three, Progressive Children's Ministries host events with proper planning. These ministries are not procrastinators, but they're cognizant of the time they need to plan a quality event and they go to work, maybe even six months or more in advance. They enlist the necessary troops ahead of time and are careful to stick to deadlines to ensure a quality, impactful, and thoughtful event for all. Now, when it comes to planning and the dying children's ministry, it is a last-minute free-for-all. These ministries are always reaching out to people last minute, asking for help on things they should have asked months ago. Unfortunately, their scattered nature begins to put a strain on everyone involved. I get it. You guys, with the hustle and bustle of ministry, we get busy. But if this is something that you struggle with, I want to encourage you to get a planner and drop in your calendar of events a year in advance. Then I want you to consider how much time it will take to truly plan the event properly with the spirit of excellence it deserves. Then I want you to go back into your calendar and go ahead and flip a few months prior and mark start dates. Create goals and self-imposed deadlines around each event and drop that into the calendar to ensure that nothing is left until the last minute. Start thinking about people ahead of time to enlist and make sure you give them enough time to prepare for what you're asking them to do. At the end of the day, you guys, children's ministry leaders must learn how to organize their personal lives and the ministry departments that they steward. So get organized. Remember, organized children's ministry leaders get to do more with the time they've been given. Sound like a lot of work? then you might want to listen to number four. Number four, progressive children's ministry leaders embrace delegation. Need I say more? These ministries carefully consider roles and responsibilities and then couple them with their team's strengths, weaknesses, and capacity so they can delegate appropriately. Now with dying children's ministries, they have absolutely no concept of building and investing in people. Most of the work is typically ran by one person and those departments tend to be micromanaging epic centers. Listen, you guys, it is impossible to create a thriving children's ministry ran by just one person. You are going to get burnt out if you don't learn to practice healthy delegation and family members don't count. I know they're easy scapegoats and they can't say no, right? They're family. But if you only delegate to family members, they're going to get burned out too. Protect your family, embrace delegation, and resolve to be a leader who builds people, who invests in people, who equips people, and who delegates to people. Remember, when it comes to healthy delegating, progressive leaders never resort to bullying or manipulation to get others to volunteer. Rather, you guys, they drive, motivate, and inspire people to serve at their best. And last but not least, number five, progressive children's ministries have a spirit that says, let's take this city for Christ. They're always looking for new ways to engage the community so that they can reach more children and families for the glory of God. They're vision driven and well, they simply believe and their faith is contagious. Now, dying children's ministries, on the other hand, stopped believing a long time ago. They're stagnant in their region and have resolved that the next generation is a lost one. They complain about today's family not going to church and embracing Christian values like they used to. These ministries are not community driven at all because they've given up on the communities in which they've been planted. Listen, I know in children's ministry, it can be so easy to get so program centered that the programming eclipses the mission. But may we never lose sight of the great commission and our God-given duties to take the message from Judea, Samaria, and to the outermost parts of the earth. You know, at the end of the day, guys, leadership demands excellence. And as children's ministry ambassadors for Christ, we should always be progressing and pushing forward for the sake of the children and families that we are called to serve. You know, Wherever you are on the spectrum, 
Know that God has put within you everything that you need to be successful. It's his desire to help you to produce a children's ministry that is thriving and bursting with life right where you are. Hey guys, that's it for this week's episode of What's Hot and What's Not in Children's Ministry. We will see you next week, same time, same place.